who could never afford to eat in the restaurant or shop in the upscale stores of Yorkton. It stands to reason that in a neighborhood like this, there should be a museum like this. It's shaped like a shoebox. Get it? Because this is the Vada Shoe Museum. Tracing the history of footwear worldwide from 2500 BC in Egypt to now. There are 8,000 pairs of shoes here, some worn by some very famous people. Founded this unique place, she's been collecting shoes since the 1940s. Her collection got so large, she had to open the museum in 1979. Among the collections are footwear from early indigenous peoples, and the fancy stuff is a exhibit called beads, buckles, and bows. Not only can you look at the shoes and boots, you can try some on for size. of shoes in this house, Casa Loma is a 90-room castle. When local financier Henry Pellet had it built from 1911 to 1914, it cost 3.5 million Canadian dollars, and it kept 300 laborers busy for months at a time. When Sir Henry lived here, he had his Casa Loma five secret passages. Now, three of them are now fire escapes, but two still exist, and they are both in this room. The first is here. Now this one here hey, leads down to his old wine cellar. Near the bottom of the stairs where it turns left into the wine cellar. It originally turned right as well. But it's now in the washroom. It's not easy. You can see this stage. You walk into the washroom in the basement. You can find the sun not washing a large iron door. It's not easy. You can't eat this. The other secret passage is right here. This one unfortunately is locked. So I think. Now. It is possible to unlock it if you know how. A lot of kids try this, which is a pretty good idea, but incorrect. In fact, there's a small white... Look underneath the thermostat. You'll see there's a small white button. Small white button. Yeah. Right. Press it. Press it. Press it. Just buzzes. But if you put some pressure on the wall and press the button... Open your secret pass. I... Okay. But tough times befell the financier, and the castle was scaled back. No. 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 Still, the place isn't too shabby. Inside, there are magnificent suites. The house was really at its time, including the shower stove. He could stand in here and have water coming out of him no, in different directions and control the hot versus the cold water from all these different, uh, different times. Admission to Casa Loma includes an audio device which explains every nook and cranny of the casa. Tours are self-guided. Now, beyond the house, there's a long underground tunnel leading to some of the most exquisite stables any horse has ever seen. <laughs> and now, to the bottom line. This mansion that cost three and a half million dollars to build in 1914 has been appraised at about 40 million dollars Canadian right now. You might not think of Toronto as a place for fun in the summer sun, but the people who live here do. The city has 17 small islands, just a short ferry ride from downtown. A few homes remain from what used to be some no, retreats. No, no, no. Now the mm -hmm. islands are mostly parkland with paths and boardwalks mm -hmm. for walkers no, no. and bikers. The islands are a great place to walk in winter because there are great views of the city center. No. There's a place no, no, no. Hanlon's no. Point. It's Toronto's only optional beach. Just my luck, it was too cold for anyone to be out and about. West of downtown, the Canadian National Exhibition Center still hosts events. Tufa! Tufa! Just across Lakeshore Boulevard, Tufa? Ontario Place. A 96 acre, 38 hectare entertainment complex with rides and water slides, a performance stage, lagoons and parkland, and restaurants. Tufa! is a shopper's paradise, from the edible to the exquisite. Just east of downtown, the St. Lawrence Market is the place for produce, fish, meat, and cheese. Now, you know, Canada is also known for cheese. And we're here at the St. Lawrence Market at a cheese shop. 
and you are going to show me some of the best you have to offer. Six-year-old premium shark, Ontario cheddar. Ontario cheddar. Ontario cheddar. Ontario cheddar. Ontario cheddar. Ontario cheddar. Not sharp enough. I'm going to have seven-year-old premium smooth. Smooth. This is Oka Classic, untouched rice, fucked cheese from Quebec. Quebec. And this, I would call this similar to Port Salute, right? Yes, sir. Run, Dio. Oh. That's good. What's your favorite cheese? Oka. You like that? Yes. Let me have another one. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, me. when you come to Toronto, buy some cheese. Me. Me, my mustard. One shop has 35 varieties. So, this is la. After all, Canada grows 90 percent of the world's mustard, and it's home to the oldest and biggest mustard mill on earth. Bang! There are other exciting shopping and entertainment areas in Toronto. The newest is called the Distillery Historic District. It's the site of what used to be the world's largest whiskey producing plant. Now it's a center for fine arts, fine chocolate. Mm. Kensington Market offers more traditional down-to-earth shopping. It has an ethnic feel to it, with shops run by immigrants to Canada. Wow, how bang! The area that you see was not touched <laughs> as, as the other spaces where it wasn't renovated as, as much. This is how the people lived. There could have been five, six, seven how people living in this. This was their living quarters, how their bedroom, their living rooms were all here. And further down, with their, there would be their kitchen and their bathroom area. Tom Mahalik first came here in 1966 from Hungary, ten years after his father escaped the communist takeover of the country. He grew up here. This was a tiny apartment over the store, home to the entire family. Now, it's just part of his huge clothing store. But when I came here, uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful area where people got together regardless of who they were, what they were. They were given an ability to open up their own shops. A lot of the stores when I came were, when I came here, a lot of the store owners were still Jewish. There were some Portuguese, there were some Italian store owners, and also there were some Hungarians that opened up shop. My father was a peddler in Hungary, so this place was Modern Toronto has a baseball park that is much more than just a home for a bunch of Blue Jays. Rogers Park, called the Sky Dome, has a 348-room hotel, a theater, and plenty of shopping. Oh, and Major League ball games all summer long. And then, to the top of the town, the CN Tower. The owners say it's the world's tallest freestanding structure, climbing 1,800 feet above street level. That's 553 meters. It's the best view of Toronto you can imagine. On a clear day, you can see it across Lake Ontario to Niagara Falls, and a bit farther off is Rochester, New York. Now, it's one thing to stand and look out the window at this height. It's quite another thing to stand and look straight down. But this is the place where you get that opportunity. This is the glass floor. It's about this thick. Oh, thank you. Toronto. Thank you. Now, some people get very nervous walking on this glass floor. Others have no fear. Me, I have fear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had this glass floor here for uh, over 10 years now. It was the first of its kind in the world. And as you can see, it is one of the most popular you can see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and just to rub it in, our midnight took me even higher.
higher to the sky pod, one of the world's highest observation towers. It's 33 stories higher than the main observation floor. Two million people cram into the CN Tower every year, so plan your visit accordingly. Our busiest times of the year are from May to October, um, and so some time-saving tips are, if you're coming during those periods, come before 11 a.m. or after 3 p.m. to avoid crowds. So, as the daylight fades, I can celebrate my walk across the glass floor at the top of the world. Toronto's star just as it shines in the day. So there's no such thing as Canadian cuisine? Wrong. I was invited to the Tundra, actually a restaurant at the Hilton Hotel. Executive chef John Cirillo is preparing four Canadian courses, which he's convinced I'll enjoy. There's a traditional Quebec appetizer, tartiere, then pickerel from a nearby lake, and then the main course. Now we have changed from white to red wine, and we've come to the main course, chef, and this is the piece de resistance. That is our signature bison, yes? Huh? Do you want to eat? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Close to about four to five hours. The great bear. Uh, it should fall right off the bone. And fall off the bone, it did. I was done. <laughs>